What's up, everybody? It's the Digital World Podcast. And boy, this document here posted by Real XRP Boy is really good. Okay, let's let's get into it. So bear with me here because it's going to be worth it in the end. Okay, so this is by BNY Mellon. Okay, and this was back in 2014. It says, Consumer Shaping Change. By 2020, consumer experience and expectations and the role of technology in meeting these expectations will account for perhaps... 70% of what shapes the evolution of payments with the needs and expectations of commercial and corporate customers applying the remaining 30%. Okay. Now, we see mobile smart and tablet technologies with their rich functional capability support supported by increasingly sophisticated applications capable of enabling complex transactions in a relatively secure technical environment. Okay, so we know that this technology is going to be improving and I'm, I mean, in the last 10 years alone, it's exponentially increased so we've gone from you know the first iPhone to now the iPhone that we have now the the processing speed it's just amazing and the web applications that we have have increased you know dramatically and substantially they're so much faster it says market participants the payment landscape will be increasingly shaped by the needs and expectations of the retail customer or consumer rather than enterprise Clients, as the retail segment builds on its lead in developing new payment solutions and raising the bar in terms of the added value that must accompany basic execution and settlement capabilities. Okay, this includes an expectation of being able to settle anytime, anywhere, across any channel. Okay, and this implies a high level of inter- interoperability across systems and across geographic markets. Now, when it comes to money, there's remember that clip I showed you from the BIS. They said that interoperability is key, especially when you have CBDCs, because if you don't have interoperability, then, uh, you know, all you're basically doing is changing from, you know, the the fiat to just a digital form, but with the same system, then you, you still have the same issues and the same problems. You still have friction in the system. It makes no sense. So you need a, a bridge asset to help with that interoperability. So that so everything could could work efficiently and can be settled um, instantaneously at any time and anywhere, and that's the use case that the digital asset XRP would bring. Now, the other thing is, you know, here it says interoperability will be a core aspiration across regions, despite the differing pace of develop, development and leapfrogging advancements of emerging economies. Okay. Technology adoption, their inter- interoperability of infrastructures across markets, okay, and the increasing engagement of non-bank providers will combine to enable the creation of global payment platforms providing 24/7 service on a near real-time basis, okay, across multiple currencies and geographic regions and markets. And this is important, okay. If you want to be to have uh, an effective payment route that has all different currencies, delivery day and time of day, like you want to have something that can do it really fast, can scale, is efficient, has no friction in the payment system. And and, and this is all sounding, and this was in 2014, mind you. This is BNY Mellon. And we know the connections BNY Mellon has to Ripple and XRP. So it's interesting that they're putting this out. Now, by 2020, greater levels of convergence will be observable across regions and markets as technology environment stabilizes. Okay, we'll see, here let me skip ahead. While some markets clearly lead in aspects of payment services delivery, the market in a decade or so will reflect greater alignment of regulatory frameworks, a multipolar geopolitical environment, and at least one fast-growing currency which will begin to rival the dollar as a primary currency of international commerce and settlement. Oh, listen, we know that Brad Garlinghouse has said that they want to be the world reserve currency. This is no hidden fact. He said it on a podium. Clear as day. They weren't hiding the fact that that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, they said they wanted to do cross borders and solve that first. And here we see that in the absence of this, the market disruptors of today will inexorably inexor- <laughs> inexorably become the market leaders of 2020 and beyond. So, I mean, they're, they're telling you, and it's going to make these uh, 
current payment businesses or traditional businesses mo or traditional banks rethink their current business models okay and think about different delivery channels to make those payments here listen with the, to, to this quote banks will need to be smart they will need to create solutions around the utility payment transaction realizing that their main competitors are evolving and will evolve from other industries and that these competitors understand a core requirement of N clients to get money from A to B quickly, securely, and adding value along the way. Boy, I'm telling you, this is this hits the nail in the sure place. This is what um, it's, it's, it's been all about this whole time. And, and I mean, if this doesn't convince you, I don't know what else does. And they've been telling you ahead of time, years in advance. Now, talking about time being short, we see that Jed's wallet, Anders L posted this, Jed's wallet is at 589 million, so he's running low. And it's funny because David Schwartz just recently posted this on Twitter, and he, um, you know, was having fun with the community, but what a coincidence, you know, that when he posts this, this number, 589, have you been in the community long enough? You know, that's a number that's talked about a lot. But here, we see Jet's wallet is running low. And this is, I thought this was a really interesting thought. So Matthew, L-I-N-Y, said Ripple announces new push into tokenized services. We're expanding from a cross-border payments network to a platform providing tokenized services, explained a senior spokesperson for RippleNet. Now, Carolyn had an interesting thought. She said, Ripple has always said they will solve cross-border payments before moving to anything else. Either that problem has been solved and the flip is coming, or there has been a strategy change. I believe it's the first, and now they are coming for all the money. <laughs> and you better believe it. It's all the money. Now, like, you know, that uh, BNY Mellon document says that traditional platforms or traditional services that are being used now they'll have to be a... a uh, a change also be left behind and talking about being left behind ethereum you know a power ledger uh <clears throat> a australian based blockchain company is going to migrate its platform from ethereum to solana in search of higher speed and scalability and i'm telling you these digital assets that are slow proof of work proof of stake they're going to be left in the dust if they don't um, find solutions because there are others that have more efficiency and more scalability so it's happening folks and it's just a matter of time hope this episode has brought you some value like and subscribe comment below what are your thoughts as always i like hearing from you this is the digital world podcast and i'll see you in the next episode